Hello everyone, welcome to episode 36 of this series. Uh, in the last episode, we got the outer wall of the industrial district, at the very least the first part of it, done. Um, in this episode, we're going to be taking a break from the industrial district, and we're instead going to be working on uh, building a stables. Um, because in the last episode, we got four skeleton horses. Now, I am still trying to figure out how exactly is the easiest way to transport them. I do genuinely think that just dragging them across the water is the way to go. Because it's not that far, and I, I'm pretty sure that horses don't fit in boats. I'm pretty sure. Um, I also don't have many rockets left, which is something to remember. Um... I have no idea if we're going to get uh, anything else done today outside of the stables, but for now, this is what we're focusing on. Also, as a slight plan moving forward, uh, episode 36, I'm going to get the towers done. Episode 37, I'm going to do something else that's not the industrial district. And episode... Nope, this is episode 36. Episode 37, I'm going to do... The towers. Episode 38 is going to be something else. Episode 39 and 40 are going to be getting the finishing touches done, like the uh, capstones on either end, the windows, any other little wall details or floor details that we know we want to put in right now. Uh, and after that, we're going to get started on some farms, maybe. We're going to get started on farms fairly quickly after we do that. Um, okay, how the fuck am I getting them up and out of here? All right, some cobblestone. Uh, just make a staircase over here. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Damn, fucking ouch! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get these horses uh, moved over. Um, and I'm just going to bring you guys back once I've got that done. Because this is going to take a a while. Um, good boy. Okay. That gets them up. Alright. Yeah, I'll bring you guys back once I've got the horses over at the main bay. Okay. So. Uh, we have got the horses. Uh moved over it was actually a lot easier once i realized that because they're skeleton horses they don't need to breathe so i can just keep riding them through the water um i've just sort of put them here for now because i'm not quite sure exactly where i'm going to build the stables yet i don't want to build them over there because i've I, I i want to build something there already and i don't want it to be the stables um I don't want to clutter this area up too much, so I'm thinking maybe over there wouldn't be too bad. Uh, although we'd have to do a bit of terraforming. I mean, it's doable. But... Well, I mean, all, all I'd want to do would be to basically just flatten this area. Running around the curve here. And I could build it on top of that. Might be quite nice. I also need to get a general idea for the stable, actually. I've literally just said, okay, I'm going to make a stable. And I haven't thought about it one bit. So, that's good. Uh, I'll put it here. But this is my impromptu uh, nether tree farm. Hmm. Thing is, I don't know how big I'm going to want it because I'm probably going to get more horses. And right now, I'm thinking of we'd put the uh, the skeleton horses in there. We'd put the llama in there. Hmm. Um. Hmm. I do still think that over the bridge that way is the best idea because we're getting a little bit crowded over on this side. Um, and if I, you know, unless I was going to, like, 
deforest this entire land, which I'm not planning on doing. Uh, I forget I have a chest up here. Um, Alright, yeah, we're gonna do that. Plus, we have a fuck ton of dirt. So, fuck it. Let's do it. Um, so, I'm going to, first of all, we'll sleep. Uh, and then I will terraform the land. And then we will get started with building the stables. Which is going to be great fun. And a nice little break from uh, the industrial district. Which, while it's, it's a wonderful project, and it's going to be very helpful, it is a little bit exhausting. Especially with all of the gathering that I also have to do. With the village uh, trading hall thing, it wasn't too bad, because most of the shit I had either nearby or already had it. Uh, with this slot, it's like, oh, you've got to go to the nether. Oh, you've got to find this rare ore in the nether. Oh, you've got to, you know, it's, it's a bit exhausting. But yeah, I'm going to terraform that land and then we'll get on with the time lapse. Okay, so, a stables. This is a pretty fun idea. Um, it's one that I've been toying with for a while. However, I didn't quite have uh, enough of a reason to make it. Now we do. Um, I decided to use uh, Deep Slate for the foundation, or uh, the quote-unquote foundation layer, uh, mainly because it is a nice contrast with some of the other blocks I plan to use, but also because something I noticed is that in every single build in this area, we have used Deep Slate. And I think that that helps tie it together in spite of the fact that some of them have wildly different block palettes. Uh, case in point, the Villager Trading Hall which was obscenely large and obscenely unnecessary. But we have it now. Um, I also use dark oak uh, logs, the sort of supports around the outside, because that contrasts quite well with the block that I'm planning on using for the walls. And it also um, picks up on something that I use a little bit later on. Uh, for the walls, I use mud bricks, uh, and I do try and variate them with mud blocks at first, like packed mud. Um, but the, the, the static sort of texture of the uh, packed mud in my eyes doesn't work nicely. The rather like solid, well laid out shapes and lines of the mud bricks. Uh, so I do eventually just use plain mud bricks for the entire wall. Uh, but we are able to break it up with glass and other detailings later on. Um, I do also use light grey stained glass for the outer windows, uh, which is again another block that appears in every single, well, nearly every single build. I say nearly because it doesn't quite appear on the uh, on the animal farms, but it appears on every single like building. Um, and I'm not I'm not including stuff like the well the bridges have deep slate. Um, but I'm not including stuff like the bridges or the docks because I see them as more decorative rather than functional. Um, I'm going to find a block to, to variate the mud brick eventually. windows however i don't quite think they work in this context i think they could work um but they don't quite work with this uh, and i do redesign these windows a bit um the front ones and well the front and back ones uh, and i do eventually settle on uh as you will see in a couple of minutes a very nice sort of curved design uh, actually not even a couple of minutes i think a few seconds um yes i settle on quite a nice uh curved design um which I then put in all of the, in as you can see, there's sort of like a row of interior walls. They also have the same window, um, but I use like fences instead of glass. 
which picks up on the dark oak uh, wood that I've used for the uh, support pillars outside, and it also picks up on the uh, ceiling, which uh, I make out of dark oak uh, planks and spruce wood logs. Uh, it's a combo that we've used quite a lot before, and it still works quite well. And it provides, again, a nice contrast with the mud bricks, which are a fairly light brick. I love them. They're really great. I just wish I could figure out what to variate them with. This is really fucking difficult. But yes, as you can see, here is the, uh, here's the slightly curved window, uh, and I send that all the way throughout the build, which is quite nice. The, the sort of, the, 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 those, like, windows, the two windows at the back of each little, like, stable area, uh, they stay. I like them. I think they work. Do end up doing quite a bit of terraforming around this uh, project, as you've already seen by the fact that, uh, well, as you've as you've already seen, flatten out the area that the stable's actually on, and you will see that I will fill in the. Uh, I might have already done it, uh, but I fill in the water like block behind me, um, and I also clear out the area on the other side of the stables, so that we actually have a nice fat bit of ground going for it. Uh, I do try uh, oak fences and spruce fences, but I do set the dark oak fences. Uh, I think they provide a nice contrast with the mud brick, and like I've mentioned before, they pick up on the ceiling and the support pillars, which is quite nice. standard sort of exterior detailing that we do of the uh, dark oak and trapdoors. I think it looks nice. I think it works quite well. Uh, it helps add a little bit more depth to the walls. We've used it in nearly all of our builds. It looks nice. I also uh, go around and put in uh, the window shutters, uh, which I do in a second. Uh, Spruce trapdoors, as always, I think they look the best. They actually look like window shutters, uh, in my opinion, mainly because of the metal running through them. Uh, but as you can see, I do originally put them in between the two windows. However, I do eventually get rid of that because I figure out that actually that doesn't look nice. It looks better with just one on either side. Um, because that, that just looks a little bit too... You don't see enough of the mud brick for my liking with that style. So we get rid of the ones in the middle, just leave the ones on the side. again uh, so we're a little bit into doing the floor already uh, but I'm doing the floor of the 
uh, actual like stable parts. Uh, I decided to use a mixture of podzo, coarse dirt, packed mud, and muddy mangrove fruits. Uh, I think they work quite nicely. Uh, I do use uh, a different uh, block for the flooring of the rest of the stable, but for the inside of the actual like where the animals are going, I use that combo. planks and spruce logs for the ceiling. Uh, we've used it a few times before and it, it picks up nicely on the dark oak fences and the dark oak logs used for the outer supports and the yada yada yada. It's a nice contrast between the muddy bricks and everything else. It, it works quite nicely. Um, it's not, it, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, it's not just a contrast between color, uh, like dark versus light. It's also a contrast in uh, tone uh, because the uh, the muddy bricks are nice, but they are rather faded. Whereas the uh, whereas dark oak is one of the more saturated woods in terms of color. So that's another way that they work quite well together. It's quite nice. Uh, I will note this is yet another project that I originally planned to get done in one episode, and unfortunately gets turned into two episodes. <laughs> Although in the next episode I do do a couple of other things as well. Um, but one of those other things is a off-camera finish-up job. Uh, you'll see when, well, you'll see in the next episode. Um, but it is, I've got, I've got a good idea for it, but it's going to take me some time. So I've put down what I can easily and I'm just going to do the rest off-camera. Uh, but yes, here we are putting in the spruce flooring. Uh, I do eventually, I believe, either at the very end of this episode or next episode, uh, replace uh, some of the blocks in this flooring with muddy mangrove roots. Uh, uh, they provide a nice texture change, uh, and it doesn't make sense for a stables to have a pristine spruce wood flooring. So adding some muddy mangrove helps split it up a bit. Also, mangrove roots, uh, the shade of brown is very similar to the shade of brown that is spruce wood. Uh, so they work quite well together, which is quite nice. second story uh, which as you can see I lay out again I forgot to press record um, but I lay out the basic framework of a second level uh, because I thought it would be nice to have a second level of sorts on this um, I just felt it fit quite well and I thought that uh, otherwise the roof would have looked rather flat and that doesn't feel right for stables um, but now we have a bit more of a curve to it uh, and I use a mixture of cobble and stone alongside spruce wood for the roof. Nice combo, works quite well. It's, it's you know, it works quite well with, with contrast to the saturation and darkness of the dark oak and the, um, 
deep slate that's still flipped on its head with the roof which is quite nice um so yeah so we use a mixture of stone and cobble and for the roof uh this does take me a while because i keep falling off and that does get on my nerves a bit um but we get there we get there in the end I also, uh, as you'll see in a bit, I do the same sort of, um, every, every external pillar, I have a row of cobble and stone leading up into the middle. Uh, and I just think that looks quite nice. Um, it helps, it also helps break up the monotony of the, uh, spruce wood, which is quite nice. <laughs>
Okay, so it has taken us a little bit of time, but we have got the majority of the main exterior and structure and everything done. None of the interior outside of the floor yet, but all that's really left to do now is do that wall on the second level. Uh, and then the main structure is done and I can get to work on the detailing, which is good. Um, there is going to be a slight change of plans to the way I was originally going to do the next few episodes. I did plan on doing the towers in the uh, district uh, next. I'm actually going to switch that around with the episode idea I had planned after, which was to do just a bit of general detailing around the place. Um, so next episode, we're going to do the detailing on this. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of terraforming off camera because this edge is a little bit rough. Um, but then, yeah, we'll do, we'll do, uh, we'll get this finished up next episode. We'll also do a little bit more details around the place, maybe getting some pathways set up, that sort of thing. Um, you know, just an extra bit of detail here and there. Um, so we're done with that for today, which is great. Uh, it did, it did take me a little bit to decide between the fences or the glass, but I do prefer the fences inside. I genuinely think that they look a fair bit better. Um, and it's night time. Uh, okay. So, got this done, kind of. Get that finished. Uh, what else? Uh, I do still need to name the hundreds of pets that are just sort of sat in the house, which I will do. Maybe next episode. Um, we'll see. I need names for this lot. I need more name tags, actually, so I need to get those villagers up so that we can get enough name tags for everyone. Um, still need to name everyone in here. It's, yeah, we've got a bit of catch-up to do with pets. Um, oh, actually, what we are going to do quickly is we need to expand this map because the it goes off the map. Uh, so we'll do that quickly. Um, do, do, do. Uh, do we even have paper? Nope. Uh, first of all, let me reorganize that. enough. Done. Need the paper in here. Ooh. So yeah, so next episode will actually be more detailing around the place. Uh, and then the following uh, three episodes should be hopefully only that long. Uh, we'll be finishing the, I guess, wall of the industrial district would be, would be what you'd call it. Um, not, not farms or anything. Those will be episodes after. Um, okay, there we go. Um, nearly at the point where we could include El Pigo's. Actually, is that El Pigo's hut on the corner there? Very well might be. It isn't. El Pigo's hut is out by like, if we put another okay, the map the map uh, um our base is definitely gonna grow, um. Do, 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 do. Okay, I still need to put glow lichen on the roof, but like I said, I'll do I've done I've done a bit of detailing now, um we'll do some more later. I definitely want to add a little bit more green to it. Uh, I also need to add the lighting upper level. Barrier, that sort of, and I didn't like the upper area up. Whoopsie. We'll fix that later. Uh, but yeah, so next episode we're going to do more detailing and we'll get the stables finished. Uh, and then the following three episodes we'll be finishing off the uh, industrial district sort of like exterior stuff. Um, once we've done that, I'm going to just make the... I'm basically going to make the farms in very close, um, like, one after the other type shit. Like, okay, Guardian Farm, done that, Iron Farm, done that, Gold, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and what I might do 
is uh why is that lighting weird is it because of the box no oh, whatever um so yeah so we'll probably like like i've mentioned before we're not gonna do all the farms right away because i don't need all the farms right away but we're gonna do ones like get that spider spawner set up get uh, a gunpowder farm, an iron farm, a gold farm, uh, a magma cube farm ready to go, uh, the slime farm's up and running, um, guardian farm, don't need a drowned farm yet, don't need a raid farm yet, don't need hunters of farms yet. Um, and then, after that, not too sure. We'll, I do still need to go and raid a mansion, I do still need to do, oh, this is finally starting to go. Um, I do still need to do a raid, just like straight up. Um, so that might be fun to do if I need a break from something. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's where we're going to call it for today. Uh, or for this episode anyway. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. It was, it was, it, this has definitely been more of a time lapse episode. Um, because it's the stables. Um, but you know, uh, like I said, next episode we'll do more details. We'll finish the stable. We might even get this big tree like set up behind me. Uh, I've got a vision for it. I haven't really planned it out yet, but I've got a vision for it. Uh, so yeah, so next episode we'll be finishing stables, tree, pathways. And then episodes after that is getting that industrial district up and ready for me to start putting farms in it. Um, so yeah, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.